Welcome back to my Book of Mormon with me, David Michael. This is episode 53, and uh, we actually have a special guest on today, who I will introduce in just a minute. But before I do, I want to thank a new Real Mimo. We have Jim, who's decided to uh, join the Mimo ranks of uh, Real Mimo. So thank you so much, Jim. And uh, speaking of that, I still haven't done the uh, Taylor Scholarship donation this month. I Sorry, just haven't got around to it. Uh, but the, the all of the funds are sitting in the Patreon account, so I will be doing that before the next episode. So fear not, we're going to make sure the money gets to the right place. Okay, so that's uh, this will be the, the quickest intro ever, because I want to get, I'm, I'm excited about who we have today, so let me introduce Bryce, and Bryce can pronounce his last name for us. Yeah, uh, Blankenagle, Bryce Blankenagle. There it is. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever attempt that. So Bryce, oh no, you did you did a, in an episode when you gave me the shout out, and I was so impressed with how well you did. It was just right off the bat. It was awesome, man. All right, Bryce yeah, for Blank, sure. Blanket angle. Yes, sir. All right, easier than uh, some of the names in the book. So anyway, Bryce, <laughs> I, I, surely, surely, anyone that's listened to the last several episodes knows that I've become a huge fan of Bryce's new show called Naked Mormonism Podcast. So I'm so glad that Bryce agreed to come on. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a chat about his show and how it came to be and, and how he goes about doing it. I'm, I've just been amazed by the amount of uh, information that Bryce is able to bring to the table as he talks about uh, the history of the Mormon church. So I want to talk a little bit about much. that. Not a problem. And then uh, Bryce agreed to do a little bit of reading for us, a little bit of a... A change from the normal format, we actually, for the first time, will have someone reading along that knows what's coming. So hopefully it doesn't spoil it. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that it's, it's going to be all right. So Bryce, before we get into this, uh, lovely book that we're reading, why don't oh, you, yes. uh, talk to us a little. First of all, what is the Naked Mormonism podcast for those that, that have been foolish enough to not check it out yet? Oh, well, well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, the Naked Mormonism podcast, um, basically what I'm just doing is, uh, taking a, uh, very skeptical look at the history of the Mormon church. And I'm trying to do it as much as possible through the eyes of the people that were there when it happened. So I try and get as many quotes as I can from the people that were actually there. You know, all of the big heavy hitters that, you know, uh, a lot of Mormons know by name, you know, William Wines Phelps, David Whitmer, uh, Martin Harris, all of these big uh, familiar names that everybody's heard reference to in the Mormon church. But nobody really knows who they are or what their personality is like. So I just want to try and introduce like a human element into the history of the church because I, I just find it so, so fascinating. I, I absolutely love it. Couldn't agree more. I, I actually likened it, and I think in the review that I wrote on iTunes to uh, Dan oh, Carlin's yeah. Hardcore History, which which is similar to that. It brings the that show brings the human element into a lot of historical events instead of just hearing the dates and facts and all of that. Really puts you in the shoes of the people that were there, and I think you've done a, a really good job doing that. But but one question I have is, how in the world do you find all this information? Well, <laughs> that's actually a good question. Um, it's kind of just a matter of uh, I dove into the rabbit hole not knowing how deep it goes, and the more information that I try to find, the more – the more crazy things that just pop up randomly that I wasn't expecting. And then I have to go chase those rabbit holes too, while I'm trying to like chase the rabbit hole that I'm already going down at the time. So it's not like the, the stuff is the information isn't out there. I mean, there's so much information. There's a wealth of it. Absolutely amazing. And one thing that I do like about analyzing the Mormon history is it's all so recent I, I, all of the quotes we can find from the people that were actually there, and it's actually recorded by the people that were actually there. We're not talking about secondhand accounts and, you know, antiquated histories that are, that are 50 years after the person actually lived. Everything that I read, it's all from the people that actually experienced it. And it's just, there aren't very many religions out there that we can do that with because well, the evidence is so sparse for their their genesis, but I mean, the Mormon Church, it's just all of the information is just out there. It's just a matter of happening upon the correct information. So would you have considered yourself an expert on Mormon history before you started this project, or do you feel like you've kind of started to become one as a result of the project? 
honestly, I had no idea. Everything that I'm researching here and I'm reporting on, I'm finding this out all out for my for myself the first time too. Like I had no idea any of this existed. And you know, like I I had watched the South Park episode with the, the all about Mormons and Martin Harris dum 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 and stuff, and I I. Well, thought, well, you know, if that's the history that it actually happened and it's different from, you know, the history that I learned when I was growing up in the church, then what else is different? How, what, where are there other changes that I should try and find that I should expound on? And that's, that's all that I'm doing. I had no idea that everything that I'm reporting actually happened until I actually do the research on it. Pretty exciting. Yeah. So as everybody knows, I was not raised Mormon, but I believe you were, correct? Yeah, that is correct. So I guess when you were, when you when you think about the ways that the Mormon history was taught to you growing up, I mean through the church, how much of it do you think was either yeah, I don't know if I want to use the word lie, but but doesn't match what you've uncovered so far? Well, honestly, like the the best way that I can think to describe it is it's not the church usually doesn't directly lie about stuff. The best word that I can use is obfuscation. Because honestly, the, there's like so much information contained in the Mormon history, but the, the history that people are taught when they are growing up in the Mormon church or when they are actually studying it through a, like a Mormon lens, it's, it's always slightly tweaked. Everything is just a little bit different and they just, omit just barely enough details so that you don't get the entire story. Hmm. So the the best word that I can think to describe it has got to be obfuscation. Um, direct lies, if I ever see those, I like to call those out on the podcast True. because they – I mean obviously if somebody is lying about their own history, we should know about that I think. But honestly, I, 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 I have found very, very few outright lies. Gotcha. So the other thing I want to ask, and hopefully it's coming up, if this is coming up in future episodes, maybe just like tell me to hold my horses. But uh, <laughs> okay. one of the things that I've been shocked by, so I, I I really understand indoctrination. So I understand if you're born into a culture where this is taught to you and this is all you know, how it just it, it makes sense because it's what you're taught. But when when hearing the way that this church started, I, I am baffled why anyone would have followed this. Like the it wasn't like that it, it was a secret then that there were things like Joseph Smith being a con artist and well maybe not con yeah. artist but certainly guilty of of conning people and and the fact that other books that this was kind of perhaps plagiarized from existed and people knew about them it's i'm amazed at how the how people got i don't know attracted to this and started following it and believed it to be true so is that something that's coming up later or is it uh is that something that we can all just scratch our heads about together Oh, honestly, it's, um, that's something, that's actually a small motive behind why I have started it is because I want to try and get in the minds of the people that were there and see why they believed it. Because everything that I've found, I have done nothing but question why I believed it because it, it, the more I find out, the more crazy it is. But I want to see why the people that were actually there that saw this happening actually believed it and i think i i honestly think it has so much to do with joseph smith i mean obviously it wouldn't exist without him but it has to do so much with his personality mm. he's he's such a an intelligent and quick-witted and charismatic dude and people just believed him no matter what he said i mean if you listen to my episode about martin harris uh, i call him uh, not so smarty marty you do um yeah, um, he was, uh, uh, Martin Harris was picking his teeth with a needle and he dropped it and dropped it on the porch that he was sitting on and he couldn't find it. So he said, Hey, Joseph, can you find the needle that I was using to pick my teeth with? And Joseph stares into his hat, you know, with the little rock in it that he t translated the Book of Mormon with. And, you know, he says, well, you know, I, or he, Joseph doesn't really say anything, but he just like looks around and then finds it instantly and hands it to Martin Harris without looking out of the hat. And Martin Harris is like, oh, wow, that's so amazing. It, it's just – it's so uh, unbelievable how credulous the people were back then. Mm. And that's all – you know, that's part of Martin Harris's uh, – personality honestly but i want to see why the people other than martin harris everybody else that was involved believed in it because 
I, I'm scratching my head about it right now. I, I really, really want to know. And honestly, beyond that, I want to see, like, I want to understand how Joseph actually thought this was going to play out. Like, I want to know if he really thought that the Mormon religion was going to be as successful as it was after his death. I, I, I don't think anything went down exactly as he planned. I think he was just kind of like, uh, like Dan Carlin says, like a historical arsonist. He just kind of wanted like, just set stuff on fire almost and see what happens. So I, I'm scratching my head about it too. We can all scratch our heads about it too and hopefully just put all the pieces together and it's all going to make sense by the end. I, I don't know though. I was surprised to learn how many of the early players, founders, whatever you want to call them, actually admitted that they were in it for the money. That 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 right. surprised me that they just outright said that like come on now we got to stick with this cuz we're going to get rich. <laughs> I thought wow. Right, that's exactly right. I mean and it wasn't just Joseph, it was his whole family too cuz I, I mean they had the the whole ginseng scandal that uh Joseph Smith's dad lost all the family's money and they were dirt poor through the upbringing. So yeah, it's it's obvious like the whole family was in on the money grubbing scheme and after Joe started recruiting more and more people together, I mean, everybody else was just thinking, "Oh yeah, we can make money off of this. We can bring people to God and make money. Why not?" And well, I mean, they didn't really think that in a vacuum that was happening everywhere around them, so I can't really blame them for it. It just it was just one that one of the cults that stuck basically. Right. So last yeah. question I have, and every interview I've ever done on different shows, there's always the one question that puts me on the spot, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, what okay. what has been the biggest, uh, either maybe the biggest surprise that you found, or the, or the thing that shocked you the most, maybe? Uh, um, honestly, the, my okay, when I found out how the Book of Mormon was printed, or what the state is that it was in, when it was sent to E.B. Grandin, the printer, I that blew my mind because right now the Book of Mormon that we're looking at, like it's got 185 years of adjustments and edits that are that make it, you know, readable and intelligible, right? But when Joseph and Oliver were done, well, translating or I guess authoring the Book of Mormon, they took it to E.B. Grandin in the most horrible, horrible form for a book. There was no punctuation, there were no verse breaks, and all of the chapters were pages and pages and pages long, and there was no paragraph structure. It was all each a single paragraph through the, all of the chapters. Wow. And there was no verses, there was no nothing. The, the mistakes throughout the early Book of Mormon are amazing. They're just absolutely astounding. So, And this is not, honestly, this is not conjecture. This is... Like we we this is factual that this, this that's is, what it yeah, looked like. This is this is recorded fact. Yes, E. B. Grandin, the printer, the typesetter there was the person who added in the paragraph structure and the punctuation and all, all, all everything that we're reading uh, that the Book of Mormon is right now, with the exception of the verses, because I think that was changed to uh, changed in like 1964 or something like that. But everything that we are reading in the Book of Mormon, with all of its punctuation and its context, that was all. The, from the mastermind of the typesetter at E.B. Grand and the, that printed the Book of Mormon. And obviously so, they wanted to do it because they wanted to sell it because obviously you don't want to print something that no one buys. Well, yeah. I mean, and if you think about it, having just, you know, five or six page long paragraphs with no punctuation, no periods, no commas, no nothing, that's kind of a hard book to read. Yeah. And and honestly, like Joe and Oliver, when they gave the manuscript to them, they were like, we are ready. This is ready to go to print. They considered it like ready for to be typed up and sent out and published in the form that it was in. And it's it. I, the typesetter must have just looked at them like, are you guys serious? Are you idiots? Like you can't you can't publish a book without punctuation. <laughs> I mean, I just try and put myself there to think about you know what the conversation was between them and how uh, Joseph and Oliver Cowdery decided. Oh well, you know maybe we should just let the typesetter take care of all of the stuff that we didn't do. 
I, I mean, that's probably been the biggest detail that's just blown my mind about the church. And I, I don't know how people can just be okay with something like that. It's, it's absolutely amazing. All right. Well, I may myself have the chance to hear about the uh, church history through the church itself, because as the book promised me in the very beginning, as long as I read this whole thing, I'll be convinced that it's true. So we're uh, <laughs> only a little more than halfway done, so we'll see if it gets there to where I uh, finally realize, see the see the light, and uh, come come join the flock. So, David, David, I have a lot of faith in you coming to the Mormon Church through the Book of Mormon. I think it's going to happen. Well, I've been entertained so far, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if we can pick up the, the faith part. So, yes. with, with that being said, are you ready to start reading the Book of Mormon? I think I'm ready if you are, good sir. I'm always ready. It's, right. I have to contain myself between episodes to not read ahead because <laughs> it's it's so exciting. All right. <laughs> so if you now you're actually reading from a hard copy book, right? Like you actually yeah, have a page turning um, book. A page turning book. Yeah, actually, my logo that I have, the Naked Mormonism podcast logo, that's actually just a picture that I took of my hard copy of the Book of Mormon. And like the little, there's uh, like gold text printed at the bottom, you know, my name on it. Yeah, I mean, this is like my legitimate scriptures, and I have like markings in the the medians, and I have you know all kinds of like notes and highlighting all over it from when I was you know in church and seminary. So, yeah, I mean, this is my my original copy. I mean, Exciting. that's oh, a turn of the pages. I heard it. I heard it. All right, yes, so, so I did to to all the mimos out there. I asked Bryce to contain himself. And let, let it, cause I know everyone likes to kind of hear my knee jerk reactions. So oh, yeah. he's only going to really jump in if I just completely miss something and say, Oh, come on now. I got to call this out. So we're going to get started, but I don't know. So far, Alma's been exciting enough that, uh, oh, yeah. I don't know that I've missed much cause it's, it's just lots of battles and killing and it's great fun. All right. All right. So it here is. we go with 57. So the, the way I think we're going to do it is, uh, we're, we're going to go back and forth between, uh, verses. And so, okay. uh, you are the guest, sir. So I think that okay. now, now we both have to yell drink though. Absolutely. That's a rule. That's yes, indeed. And I hope that all the mimos at home yelled drink along with us and <laughs> yes. even drink along. I'm going to be partially playing along. To okay. be honest, I thought we were going to start earlier. And so I already had a few, but anyway, so all right. people are going to think I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Maybe I am. Who knows? All right. So 57. Well, you're, you're drinking with all the mimos. So, I mean, as long as you're not drinking alone, you're not an alcoholic, right? True. Yeah, I mean, we have already established that. Like, if so. you're playing yes. along to a game, it's not alcoholism. Fantastic. Yes. True. <laughs> right. And yeah, um, like when I was like, when my family would study scriptures like every night, uh, we would just read like five verses and then pass it off to the next person. So you just want to do like five verses at a time? Uh, I, I'll, I'll lose time. track of the math if I'm playing the game. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's just do one verse at a time. What do you say? <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, Actually, I know how I'll keep myself from getting obliterated. I, I won't okay. drink if I'm reading. If you read a drink, I'll knock one back. But if I read a drink, oh. I'll just keep going. That, Sweet. It'll be easier to edit anyway. All right, All right, so verse 1, sir, of Alma chapter 57. Take it away, Bryce. And now it came to pass that drink. I received a <laughs> drink. You missed it? The I first missed one? It. I missed the first one. I failed. You, you might get fired, sir, if you, oh, if you don't step up your life. game. Oh, okay. All right. I, I'm, 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 my mind's in the game now. All right, ready to go. Uh, I received an epistle from Amaron, the king stating that if I would deliver up those prisoners of war whom had taken that whom we had taken that he would deliver up the city of Antipara unto us his name's not a moron that's too uh, bad i'm sorry yeah and I, can i be honest when when you came across the name Tiancum and yeah. you just said Teencum i was really really hoping that you would just keep it Teencum cuz it was so funny i actually then, thought tea and cum sounded funnier and honestly, like once you finally like made the distinction of tea and cum, I was like, huh, I never thought about it that way because that is actually funnier. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad you kept it that way. Well, you can say but, Amaron all you want. I'm still calling him a moron un you, until he stops just... acting like one. That's his name. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> it sounds like uh, a moron wants uh, prisoners of war. He's going to give up a city for some prisoners. Man, he really wants his prisoners. All right. I guess. So, and again with these epistles, I don't know why they started here. Although someone did write in, oh, I, you know what? I almost don't even want to say it because I, I can't give him credit. Oh, I'm sorry. So whoever sent me this, I'm sorry I'm not giving you credit. I don't have time to look it up. But someone actually mentioned that uh, the word epistle is Greek for letter. And 
they were most commonly referred to from Paul's letters to the different churches in the New Testament. And so it was interesting that they started using the word epistle in a land that would have had no knowledge of Greek. But anyway, funny. Uh, but we'll that that kind of happens a lot. A little so. bit, a little bit. Okay. Yes, yes it did. So, so I sent an epistle unto the king, and by I, I'm assuming it's Alma. I think, yeah, the narrative is through Alma here. No, sorry. Uh, right. I think no, it's, it's Helaman. Helaman. Yeah, Helaman, Helaman is the yep. epistle guy. Yeah, all right. Yes. So Helaman is one of Alma's sons. Correct. Yeah, see? I'm, I'm all remembering. Right. Okay. All right, so I sent an epistle unto the king that we were to send sh- – I'm sorry, that we were sure our forces were sufficient to take the city of Antipara by our force. And by delivering up the prisoners for that city, we should suppose ourselves unwise that we would only deliver up our prisoners on exchange. Okay, so he's like, I don't want your city. I can take it whenever I want. Screw you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there, there. That's correct. And Amaron refused mine epistle, for he would not exchange prisoners. And therefore, we began to make preparations to go against the city of Antipara. Now, in fairness, the last time Helaman offered up a prisoner exchange, he reneged on it, right? He totally I did. I think that, yeah. Yeah. So what's this about? Is he, like, planning on doing that again, or what? No, I think Amoron learned his lesson. So the last time oh. he said, hey, let's do this exchange, and Amoron's like, okay, sounds good. And then he was like, no, I'm going to go arm him instead. So, yeah, yeah. I think Amoron's like, I don't, I don't trust your exchanges anymore. So, well, yeah. that would make sense. I would definitely hope so. Yeah, so he's a, he, so a moron trying a new strategy. He said, instead of this prisoner exchange, which clearly didn't work out for me last time, I'll just give you a city for my prisoners. Still not working. Because, uh, right. yeah, Helaman is proud of those prisoners. He doesn't want to let them go. All right. <laughs> but the people of Antipara did leave the city. Mm, that makes it easy. And fled mm-hmm. to other cities, which they had possession of, to fortify them, and thus the city of Antipara fell into our hands. Well, that was the... Easiest conquest of a city ever. All right. No kidding. That's has that ever happened before? The people just abandoned the city that you were trying to take, well, and before I, you actually try and like lay siege to it, or actually try they, to they take it, they, they just ran. They, they don't know how to lay siege. I don't know what you're talking about. They, okay, moving I'm on. Sorry, my mistake. Verse five. And thus ended the twenty and eighth year of the reign of the judges. You got ripped off on that one. And, I know. Seriously. And aren't they supposed to say of the people of Nephi after the reign of the judges? I guess they. Uh, they've said it, you know, dozens of times. It's it's shorthand by this point. I, I wish they would just say twenty eighth year and be done with it. All right. Right. No kidding. And it came to pass. Drink. I was hoping you'd catch that one. That in yes. the commencement of the twenty and ninth year, we've received a supply of provisions, and also in addition to our army from the land of Zarahemla and from the land round about to the number of six thousand men. Well, that's pretty good. They were all, he was all proud of his 2,000, so 6,000 is pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Besides 60 of the sons of the Ammonites who had come to join their brethren, my little band of 2,000. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so now there's uh, 2,060, because we already learned it, that they can't die. So I guess he has 2,060 little soldiers now, or little band, or whatever, little sons. I can't remember. I still, in my head, have a vision of like little eight-year-olds with swords running around. But anyway, okay. And okay, hang on. Can, can I – okay, finish the verse, and then I'll tell you the, the Mormon teachings of this. Sounds good. And now, behold, we were strong. Yay. Drink. Drink. We, uh, we also – I'm sorry. We had also plenty of provisions brought unto us. So we got provisions, and they got uh, 6,000 more people. And uh, 60 more kids to join the little kid army. Your turn. So, okay, yeah, before I start reading, okay, when you read the 2,000 stripling warriors that it called it in there, that's that's like a huge point of Mormon doctrine. They always talk about the the armies of Helaman. Like, that's that's a primary song. I remember. We oh, are it's, a, it's on the armies. website, yeah. Okay, the, if yeah, anyone I wants mean, to hear yeah, that exactly. song, go to the last episode, and you will see plenty of links to it on the website, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's talked about tons, especially as people are growing up in the church. So, verse 7, and it came to pass. Drink. Drink. And I'm actually drinking. Was, all right. That it was our desire to wage a battle with the army, which was placed to protect the well, hold city. Hold on. Let me try this one. Uh, I would say, come, come and I. Yeah. Come and I. <laughs> Close I actually like that more. Please say, please continue to say that in the all of your readings. The city I. Sounds like a fun city. All right. <laughs> Could you imagine if T and Come goes to Come and I? Man, that'll be a party. <laughs> and now behold, I will show unto you that we soon accomplished our desire. Yay. Drink. Drink. With our strong force, or with a part of our strong force, we did surround by night the city of Come and I a little before they were ready to receive a supply of provisions. Wait a minute. Are they actually laying, laying siege to a city? Is this happening? Hey, don't don't get carried away now. All right, all right. Let's see what happens. Come on, come on. I'm excited now. All right. And it came to pass. Drink. Drink. 
that we did camp round about the city for many nights. This is a siege. We, it's happening. It, they finally figured it out. All right, keep going. Let, sorry, let's, sorry, sorry. Let's keep going. But we did sleep upon our swords and keep guards that the Lamanites could not come upon us by night and slay us, which they attempted many times. But as many times as they attempted this, their blood was spilt. Dude, this is a siege. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is a siege. It's They figured it out. <laughs> they finally figured it out. Amazing. All right. At length, their provisions did arrive. And they were about to enter the city by night, and we, instead of being Lamanites, were Nephites. What? Why would they say that? All right. Therefore, we did take them and their provisions. I have no idea why they threw in that they were not Lamanites, they were Nephites. How could anyone reading this not know that? But anyway, straight up siege. They're not letting provisions enter the city. They're, they're, they've blocked blockaded the city oh i'm so so proud of these guys finally this is good stuff you know what it is it was moroni was uh i I keep saying he's good at defense he's terrible at attacking he was leading all the armies before he didn't figure it out now we got it sounds like helaman is actually like taking control of these troops and he's he just seems like he's a better uh field general than moroni ever was is my guess well well, he's flying the flag of of liberty right or the the uh, standard of liberty uh, the, I think, yeah, title of liberty that title on the, liberty, the, yeah. the, the flag, right? Okay. I mean, uh, that's obviously, that's, that's gotta like inspire some real innovation and some real, uh, you know, muster for his, you know, 2060 people here. I mean, that's, that's what it's gotta be about. That's the difference. I, I suppose, I still don't quite understand that whole thing. I, that, that was supposedly some monumentous thing where he ripped his robe and wrote some crap on it and put it on a, oh, yeah. on a pole. It just sounded like a, some tacky arts and crafts thing. I didn't quite get <laughs> yeah. how important that was, but apparently it was. Mm-hmm. All okay, right. uh, my turn on 11. Uh, sure. All right, and notwithstanding, the Lamanites being cut off from their support after this manner, they were still determined to maintain the city. Therefore, it became expedient that we should take those provisions and send them to Judea and our prisoners to the land of Zarahemla. All right, so he, he's just left the prisoners out in the battlefield that whole time i mean they've had it for a while i mean it's been several chapters anyway all right so they finally uh i'm gonna set up a proper pow camp back in in zarahemla and all of the uh lamanite provisions they're stealing sending them back to judea fair enough good stuff and it came to pass drink drink but not many days had passed away before the lamanites began to lose all hopes of succor sucker i don't know success is what i assume it means Therefore, they yielded up the city unto our hands, and thus we had accomplished our designs in obtaining the city, come and I. So there you go. Successful siege. Fantastic. Uh, yes, indeed. I do uh, love that they're describing this like this was the first time in history anyone figured this out. Right? They're like, listen to this genius thing that we did. It's like, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, you can go back to the days uh, of, like, Assyria and find that this was happening. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Moving on. So they've got, come and I is now Nephite. Fantastic. Yes, indeed. But it came to pass drink, drink, that our prisoners were so numerous that notwithstanding the enormity of our numbers, we were obliged to employ all our forces to keep them or to put them to death. <laughs> Sounds like my <laughs> showed up. It's yep. fantastic. So I don't, I don't get it. So basically, they're saying they, are, they have so many prisoners, it will take their entire army just to guard them? I thought they sent them back to Zarahemla. I don't know. Or did they get more prisoners when they took the city coming I? Maybe that's what it means. I, I am not sure that that does make the most sense, but I, I mean. But I love that your options are your tough. options are that uh, we can either guard them, but if we don't have enough people to guard them, we just got to kill them. I mean, what else can you do? Oh, right, of course. I'm telling you, these people needed a Geneva Convention that would have helped them <laughs> enormously. Okay, well, behold, oh, yeah. they would break out in great numbers and would fight with stones and with clubs or whatever thing they could get into their hands, insomuch that we did slay upwards of two thousand of them after they had surrendered themselves prisoners of war. Whoa, uh, a slaughter. That's not cool. That's like slaughtering pigs, man. That's just fish in a barrel. Well, I also love that it's like they're somehow trying to make them sound evil that they were attempting escape. Like, what, <laughs> you, you wouldn't if you were in Lamanite hands? As a matter of fact, they did escape when they were in Lamanite hands. When they, uh, uh, That's right. Anyway, 2,000 prisoners slaughtered. Fantastic. Doesn't even shock me anymore. Moving on. Well, I mean that that was one of the tenets that was in the title of Liberty, right? Uh like killing helpless prisoners. Wait, I no, honestly don't sorry. remember. I, I don't I don't think that was actually in there, my mistake. 
Anyway, verse 15. Therefore it became expedient for us that we should put an end to their lives or guard them, sword in hand, down to the land of Zarahemla, and also our provisions were not any more than sufficient for our own people. Oh, that makes a little bit of sense. They didn't have enough food and enough any anything for all the prisoners, so just kill them. Uh-huh. That works. Notwithstanding that which we had taken from the Lamanites. That is exactly what that said, isn't it? Yeah. They weren't expecting more mouths to feed. Said to kill 2,000 of them. After, after Moroni killed 4,000 of his own people, 2,000 prisoners of war just seems almost like a, an afterthought for these people. All right. And now, in these critical circumstances, which I assume means too many mouths to feed, it became a very serious matter to determine concerning these prisoners of war. Nevertheless, we did resolve to send them down to the land of Zarahemla. Therefore, we selected a part of our men and gave them charge over our prisoners to go down to the land of Zarahemla. I'm making a big deal about this. I don't understand why it's such a big deal to transport prisoners, but okay, moving on. All right. But it came to pass. Drink. Drink. That on the morrow they did return, and now, behold, we did not inquire of them concerning the prisoners. For behold, the Lamanites were upon us, and they returned in season to save us from falling into their hands. For behold, Amaron had sent to their vision, or to their support a new supply of provisions, and also a numerous army of men. I have to read that again. I don't understand what just happened. Yeah. That, that was that was kind of a mess. You don't know that either. You're supposed to know this book. I'm supposed to be oh, the amateur. Are you kidding me? I, I the last time I read this book was when Gordon B. Hinckley issued his uh, "Read the Book of Mormon in One Year" challenge, and that was like. By the way, I like love that you think I know or something. I love that you think I have any idea what you're talking about. But anyway, all right. Any, so any any current Mormon listeners or ex Mormon listeners will know what I'm talking about there, and will hopefully uh, be like, "Oh, I did it too," or the, like the, their parents, you know push them to do it or something. It so. sounds like I'm just going to go with it. Cause I, I usually do this. I don't have time to sit here and ponder it forever. So I just take a stab mm-hmm. in the dark. Sounds like somehow the Lamanites got reprovisioned and they are coming to take their prisoners back is what it sounds like. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I would go with that. We'll I see. Have no idea. All right. And it came to pass drink. Drink. That those men whom we sent with the prisoners did arrive in season to check them as they were about to overpower us. Uh, keep going. Just keep going. But behold, my little band of 2060 fought most desperately. Yea, they were firm drink. before... Drink! You missed a drink, sir. Oh, drink! Oh, we Two haven't strikes. had a yay yet. Oh, Two strikes. Okay. That is not the first yay. That's the second, but whatever. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I know my yays and came to pass it, sir. Uh, yeah, you do. I can't deny that. Anyway, drink. They were firm before the Lamanites and did administer death unto all those who opposed them. Of course they did. Oh, yeah, why not? Those are some good child soldiers. <laughs> All right, and as the remainder of our army were about to give way before the Lamanites, behold, those 2,060 were firm and undaunted. <laughs> I love those guys. All right, yay, drink! Got go. that one. And they did obey and observe to perform every word of command with exactness. Yea, and even according to their faith... Good God, was- three strikes now. Oh, sh- yay, drink. And oh. you're going to make me beep out profanity. You are just failing all over the place. Wow, I should just mute my mic for the rest of this episode. <laughs> I I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this beer uh, to make it, uh, you know, make up for my three strikes there. All right. I guess there are three outs in an inning, so man, I don't know what to say. All right, so Speaking yay, of drink. Out, uh, I need to go uh, resupply on beer after this, uh, this verse here. And where was I even? Uh, Twenty-one halfway through. Twenty-one halfway through. Yea, drink, and even according to their faith, it was done unto them. And I did remember the words which they said unto me that their mothers had taught them. Yeah, I remember the the mothers told them, whatever you do, just just never question anything, and you'll be good to go. I think it was something along those lines. It yeah, was that, like, don't that's... doubt. Doubting's bad. And then it was like, and the sons didn't doubt their mothers, and I was like, this is just a doubt-free zone. I remember that now. Okay. And now behold, it was these my sons and those men who had been selected to convey the prisoners to whom we owe this great victory, for it was they who did beat the Lamanites. Therefore, they were driven back to the city of Manti. I'm trying to see. So, so I, the sons are actually now in charge of the prisoner, like moving to the prisoners there, Hamlet, sounds like. And I guess that's some sort of honor. I have no idea where the city of Manti came in. This is a really poorly written chapter. I don't know what's going on. 
Do well, it. yeah, and I think the the 2060, I think they were just reinforcements. So after they had, you know, helped them out, they were just like, well, we still got to give them a task. So we'll, well, let's just have them, you know, oh, I get it now. all these prisoners. Yeah, they're going to give me the prisoners. It was the Lamanites. They they whipped them so hard that they were driven back to Manti. Like that's supposed to mean yeah. something. All right. Yeah. Do you need to step away for a sec or, you, or you're still on? Oh, this? no, I actually just did with a muted mic. So I'm good to go. Well done, sir. You're on 23. <laughs> all right. 23. And we retained our city, Cumenae, and were not all destroyed by the sword. Nevertheless, we had suffered great loss. Oh. Uh, did any of the 2060 die? Surely not. I, no, 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 because I'm pretty sure that through all of the battles... Uh, never mind. Ah, uh, you almost gave me a spoiler. All right, all right. And it came to pass, drink, drink, that after the Lamanites had fled, I immediately gave orders that my men who had been wounded should be taken from among the dead and caused that their wounds should be dressed. I don't, what a weird thing to say. Like, like, why wouldn't he have done that? Like before, did they like, oh, you're wounded. Sorry. Bleed outs. I am weird. All right. So he took care of the wounded soldiers. Good for him. Moving on. 25. <laughs> yeah. 25. And it came to pass. Drink. drink. That there were 200 out of my 2,060 who had fainted because of the loss of blood. Nevertheless, according to the goodness of God and to our great astonishment and also the joy of our whole army, there was not one soul of them who did perish. Yea, drink. There you go. And neither was there one soul among them who had not received many wounds. Re really? Some of them were bled <laughs> out to the point of unconsciousness, but they didn't receive many wounds? I guess it was apparently, just like one wound, but pretty severe. It's like a death by a thousand cuts, apparently. So these guys were like 999 cuts or something. I really don't understand why they don't take these 2060 and just go and just lay everything to waste. They can't die. It's fantastic. I, I mean, if you had a, an unquenchable army of 2,060 people, I mean, I think of what you could get done today. That'd be so fantastic. Oh, yeah. A oh. Anywhere. ISIS yeah, yeah, is – I don't care how many ISIS there is. Just keep going. Just keep killing them. Can't die. That's right. Exactly. It'd be fantastic. I and, joked I mean, about that. If they that. can't die, you don't even have to feed them or, like, resupply them. You just send them walking into the desert with swords and all 2,060 of them come back all bloody and stuff, but they accomplished every mission you sent them on. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I made a joke about that last episode. It sounds like they're actually making that pretty clear. They just don't die. All right, so here we go. And now, the preservation was astonishing to our whole army. Well, me too. <laughs> Pretty astonishing to anyone, really. No kidding. Yay. Drink. Drink. They should be spared while there was a thousand of our brethren who were slain. <laughs> oh, okay. I love that there's just a side note that a thousand people died. <laughs> but it's it's so awesome that none of these guys died. Okay. And we do justly ascribe to it the miraculous power of God. So what, where was God on the other thousand, I wonder? Anyway. Because of their exceeding faith and that which they had been taught to believe, there was a just God, and whosoever did not doubt, there should be preserved by his marvelous power. So there you go. These 2060, they're staying alive because they're not doubting. They refuse to ask questions, and that's why God's making sure they don't die. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Good, good stripling warriors there. Yep, that's why they're a good model for teenagers growing up in the church. Well, at first, after the last episode, all these people were posting like, pictures of parades in towns in Utah's with all the 2000 stripling war. And I was like, why? Wow, my God, these are, this is like a famous group of people. And mm -hmm. now it's, I, I didn't realize that their uh, story continued. So now it's starting to make sense. They are a pretty, pretty badass little group. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. 27. Now this was the faith of these of whom I have spoken. They are young and their minds are firm and they do put their trust in God continually. Uh, okay. What do you say to that? Great. I, Good for them. Right, exactly. And now it came to pass, drink, that after we had thus taken care of our wounded men and had buried our dead and also the dead of the Lamanites, who were many. Mm, make sure you know that. We don't get a number, but I guess it's more than a thousand because, anyway, whatever. Behold, we did inquire of Gid concerning the prisoners whom they had started to go down to the land of Zarahemla with. I thought Gid was a city. Gid was uh, a city. <laughs> I, Gid's a dude I'm now. not sure. Yeah, I, I think uh, Gid is like the king, no, sorry, the chief judge or whatever of Gid. So I, oh, I, right. it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, like there's E5's a city Moroni of, and there's a city. Yeah, 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 yeah. people. OK, there you go. Yeah. All right. Now, Gid was a chief captain over the band who was appointed to guard them down to the land. There you go. And now, behold, these are the words of Gid said unto me. Behold, we did start to go down to the land of Zarahemla with our prisoners. And it came to pass, drink. We did meet the spies of our armies who had been sent out to watch the camp of the Lamanites. 
Wait, oh, so they met their own spies, not the enemy spies. All right, cool. So they met their own... Okay, got it. 31 years. All right. And they cried unto us, saying, Behold, the armies of the Lamanites are marching towards the city of Cumini, and behold, they will fall upon them. Yea, drink, drink, and will destroy our people. Okay. So this is the city they just took by siege, and now it looks like the Lamanites are coming to take it back, right? I guess, but I mean, why would the Lamanites want to come take it back? There's no, nothing there left. There's nobody there left. I, oh, didn't yeah. everybody just run away? So they're not like no, no, trying no, to no, free no. the... No, you're, you're, you're mixing it up. That was a different oh. city. That was... uh. Oh. Hold on. Let's go back. The city where everyone left was Antipara. Oh, the city yeah, of Kamenai, which you keep mispronouncing. Clearly it's Kamenai. <laughs> but Kamenai is the one where... um. They actually, for the first time in, in world history, laid siege to a city and then uh, and took it. So now sounds like Lamanites want that one back. So there you okay, go. Okay, yeah. So I was mistaken there. there Thank you for the correction. No problem. So this is uh, where am I now? Thirty. Uh, Thirty three. Okay. And then it came to pass, Drake, because Drink. of their rebellion, we did cause that our sword should come upon them. And it came to pass, drink again. Drink again. That they did in a bot. They did in a body run upon our swords, in the which the greater number of them were slain, and the remainder of them broke through and fled from us. Uh, weird, really worded. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It sounds like Lamanites just came in a crazy screaming roar towards a, a wall of swords and most of them died. I guess is what I, that sounds that like. That happened in like 300, right? The, the, like the opening scene where they first clash against the wall of the Spartans, right? They just have their spears stuck out and their shields up and the, all of the, the armies just rah, push, run into the sword, the, you know, all the spears and just die right off. Didn't that happen? I know what happened. We missed a verse. That's uh, why this is what? confusing. Yeah, we missed 32. So oh, 32. I, I got to read it. And it came to pass drink oh, that our drink. prisoners did hear their cries, which caused them to take courage, and they did rise up in rebellion against us. So there you go. Uh, this oh. was the prisoners that just jumped up, and, and they heard the, the Lamanites, you know, battle cry. And they got them all courageous, jumped up. Some of them died trying to escape, but a bunch of them actually escaped. All right, I think we're back where we need okay. to be. Mm. All right, and, that, and then you already read 33, so should I just jump on 34? I believe so, sir. All righty. And behold, when they had fled, and we could not overtake them, we took our march with speed to, towards the city Cumini. And behold, we did arrive in that time that we might assist our brethren in preserving the city. All right, so they basically said, well, we don't have prisoners anymore, so no point taking them to Zarahemla. I guess it's time to go back. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, they either killed them or they got away, so hmm, problem solved. <laughs> no more mouse to feed. Exactly. It's box. just a 2060 left. Yeah. Uh, and behold, we are again delivered out of the hands of our enemies. Oh, I guess it was... So when they got back, they took care of whatever was going on there, it sounds like. Okay. Uh, and blessed is the name of our God, for behold, it is he that has delivered us. Really? So the fact that your prisoners <laughs> escaped was God delivering you. That's that's awesome. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. God works in mysterious ways. Yay, drink, that he has done this great thing for us. All right. So it was up to get, So God said, what do we do here? I need that army to turn around, but they're supposed to be transporting prisoners. I have an idea. I'll make it so the prisoners can escape. And uh, then the uh, army will have no reason to continue on to Zarahemla. So there you go. Good mm. plan, God. That's that's a really good plan, actually. Uh, look, I mean, you can't you can't knock the results. It worked. Right. No. Right. No. Thirty six. All right. Now it came to pass, drink, drink, that when I Helaman had heard these words of Gid, I was filled with exceeding joy because of the goodness of God in preserving us, that we might not all perish. Yea, drink. Well done. And I trust that the souls of them who have been slain have entered into the rest of their God. Okay. And that was Fair in enough. 57. Oh, man, look at this. I think I'm worried we don't have time to read another. Let me see how long 58 is. Uh, it looks pretty long. Wow, we're not going to do it. This is a uh, one-chapter episode, everybody. But you uh, know what? It's okay because we had, uh, we uh, yeah, I didn't know how long the interview portion would go. And I, and I definitely want to give time to Bryce to talk about how to find his show and, um, yeah, how to reach out to him, give him advice and, and feedback. Cause I don't know how much feedback you've gotten, Bryce, outside of me. I know I've been borderline harassing you since you started your show. Cause I've been <laughs> a fan. No, I've actually really appreciated all the feedback you have given me. Like I, the show wouldn't be where it is without your help. So I really do appreciate that. And you know what you're doing, your show is fantastic too for the ex Mormon, uh, current Mormon and non Mormon 
listener alike. I mean, I really appreciate what you do. You just described every person in the world, by the way. I know, exactly. I mean, (laughs) I'm telling you that everybody should be listening to your show. It's kind of like when when the book says, uh, when it describes, you know, the Gentiles and non-Gentiles. I'm like, why don't you just say everyone? That's that's everyone. everyone. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. You're right. Anyway, yeah, true. But yeah, um, I, I've gotten a little bit of feedback on it. I mean, I can probably count on, you know, a couple of hands and, you know, a few toes, uh, how many feedback messages I've gotten and I've really loved them. So far, the feedback has been relatively positive. Um, you know, I did get one, uh, Christian listener that emailed me that was not too happy with something that I said, but you know, yeah, wh- whatever. I, I welcome that as well. But honestly, you know, I, I would love to get a little more feedback on the show, uh, just, just to see if people like the direction that I'm taking it, that the, the, the show is going. And, you know, if, if I'm doing something that people don't like, I would much rather not be doing that. So. Yeah, I mean, I I would just like to, you know, if people want to uh, go to my website, it's uh, nakedmormonismpodcast.com. Um, I was sure to add the podcast in at the end there because I think Naked Mormonism probably turns up some odd results if you Google it. So it's podcast, nakedmormonismpodcast.com. Oh, I'm so and tempted then- to Google that now. <laughs> right <laughs> when I uh, when I did do the search to see if the page existed before I uh, uh, reserved the domain, uh, it was it was pretty mind boggling to be honest. But I mean, listener discretion advised. Oh my do god, I'm so want. excited! Uh, I actually can't wait till we're done now. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so naked Mormonism podcast dot com or you know, Facebook slash uh, naked Mormonism. Um and I'm how, on Twitter how at people, Naked Mormonism. Sorry, I, I interrupted. Fini- say the Twitter again, I interrupted you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um or at naked Mormonism on Twitter. And then how can there. people reach out directly to you like through email? Um, you can just go to my website and on the contact page, uh, there's a little form you can fill out. That's the best way. Or, I mean, even sending me a message on Facebook, I get to those not quite as frequently as my emails, but I mean, I get around to those as well. And I actually had one of my listeners email me and offer to, uh, run the Facebook page for me. And she's been doing a fantastic job so far. And I really, really appreciate what she's doing. Well, so, I mean, she'll be able to help out too. Seriously? You have like, right, yeah. I, well, no one has ever offered to do that. I, I talk constantly on this show about how awful I am on Facebook. Like, I mean, I bring it up all the time. Nobody ever wants to do that for me. So I'm well, glad that you have, uh, I don't know. I'm just saying my most. Someone, mm, I don't know what to say to that. I'm jealous, sir. And oh, oh well thank done. you. <laughs> well done. Uh, you have well, a Facebook I'm, honestly, administrator. I'm, I'm uh, kind of jealous of your listener base as well. So, I mean, honestly, I I think we can both help out each other a little bit here. And I I do appreciate you inviting me onto your show to do this. I mean, I, I wasn't really – I was hoping that I could get, a, you know, a couple-minute shout-out. And you started off with that. But, I mean, you just went way above and beyond that. And I just really appreciate what you're doing. Bryce, I promise you this is not out of the goodness of my own heart. I'm doing it because I <laughs> really, really like your show. And I think uh, I, I want to give you as much motivation as possible to keep doing it. Because, uh, yeah, it's like a television show that doesn't have good ratings. It gets dropped. I want to make sure you have enough ratings to stay motivated to keep doing it because I'm tell- I'm just mad that there's only six episodes right now, quite frankly. <laughs> All right. So uh, step it up. Get me number seven because I'm, <laughs> I'm jonesing for another fix. Uh, I'm in the final editing process of seven right now. It should be launching, a, you know, pretty soon here. So I hope, uh, I, I'm pretty pleased with how it's going. So I think everybody, I hope everybody else will enjoy it. But yeah, give, I, give, me, I actually, give me a taste. Give me a taste. What's seven about? Oh, oh okay. So you, you listened to six already, right? I did. I've listened to them all oh. three oh, times. Okay. No, oh, I'm not oh, that oh. concise, but wow. no. oh, I'm kidding. Goodness. It wasn't okay. three times. I'm not that crazy, but anyway, yeah, fan? I have listened to them all. Champion. <laughs> this is kind of—I kind of like this. I'm—I'm I'm a little flattered. I'm, my heart's a little Twitter paid. Thank you, David. <laughs> but uh, uh, so, episode six, I was reading the first of uh, two essays that the church released about polygamy. Um, you know how the first episode was all about the manifesto and the end of polygamy, and then they had to release the second essay that's all about Joseph Smith's plural wives and this one so the last one i didn't have a whole lot of like historical basis to do like research on and stuff so it wasn't quite as interesting i don't think but this one they make some pretty wild assertions and uh it's it's a mess it's it's an absolute beautiful mess and i cannot wait to see the reactions to the episode so i can't wait wait all right it's it's on its way thank you for the spoiler sir I uh, usually don't like spoilers, <laughs> but I'm I'm excited about about that one. So all right. to, to all the mimos out there, 
seriously, you know, maybe, maybe I'm crazy and like it and you won't like the show. I doubt it though. If you listen to it, even if you think that you know about Mormon history and it wouldn't be interesting to you, the way Bryce described it is perfect. It is, it brings the human element in. I really feel like I, I almost feel like I'm a spectator that's watching it happen. And so, uh, Bryce, I think you're doing a great job. I really hope you keep going with the show. I hope there's just dozens of them that you put out because, uh, I'm a fan. So, well, thank everybody you. Yeah, else? absolutely. And I mean, like you said, it's, it's the listener feedback that's the motivation. I mean, I have two iTunes reviews right now, one of which was yours, which was the first one. Congratulations on that, sir. Oh, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> gotta bleep yourself. Uh, I can but, say hell. I mean, if it's in the Book of Mormon, it's hell? not a swear word. Come on. Oh, hey, I like, I like hell. So, all right, cool. Hell yeah. We can say so, come too, cause it's in the book. Right. Yeah, that's right. a fair one. You know, and tea and come too. I mean, exactly. that's, that's even better. You know, mixed drink of goodness there. But yeah, I mean, I, I would just love to get some, some feedback on iTunes. I would love to get some uh, positive revert, reviews in there. I mean, preferably five stars, but I mean, if not, I understand. Um, yeah, I mean, that, the feedback is what is driving me so far and I, I would like a little bit more of it. So, yeah, if anybody's interested, you guys, uh, anybody that can want or wants to post iTunes reviews, I mean, everybody's going to see them because they're the only ones that are up right now. All right. And I'll tell you, sometimes the when you get the one-star reviews, it means that you've struck a nerve and it kind of feels good. I got another one uh, last <laughs> week. Got another one-star review. It, I won't lie. It hurts the rankings. It really does. Whenever oh, yeah. I put a show out, within like 24 hours, it usually jumps up in the top five. It's it's happened since the show started. But by right the point. times where I get a one-star review, it doesn't. And so it does hurt. But I still, I'm kind of like, I'm a little bit proud when I get them because it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys don't like this, do you? You don't like someone reading your your book without your little missionary there telling them what they're supposed to read. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I'm 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 with you. So everybody, seriously, check it out. Uh, before we go, and uh, and Bryce, I, if you just want to hang out for a second, I just got to mention this. So I did yeah. re-record with the uh, guys from Mormon Stories podcast, and so that should be coming out relatively soon. I think I mentioned last week that they uh, they took all the blame for it not being organized enough, even though I was quite hammered when we did it. So I was, which, by the way, you being super super sloshed and reading the Book of Mormon, dude, that was so epic. I've done it more I than once, it sadly. So much. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, now that, that episode that you did, that it was, there were so many yays, so many of them, and just to hear uh, hear your rambling by the end. Sometimes was, that drinking oh, game is crazy. awesome, and sometimes it's it's seriously torture. But anyway, <laughs> it was it was nine beers in an hour. That's not human. <laughs> Anyway, that is not. I did it though somehow. All right. So, uh, so I will. I'll absolutely make sure that I'll post it to, to Facebook and Twitter when that episode comes out, so everybody can can take a listen to it. And maybe I don't know if it'd be shady. I actually recorded the whole first interview, so I have it. <laughs> I don't know. Would it be mean for me to like somehow release it? Maybe that's something I'll do for the uh, for everybody on Patreon. Put like a little hidden file up there that people could listen to. I don't know. That's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I feel like it might be a little mean because they weren't happy with the result and then putting it out there. I'll figure it out. Uh, there's got to be a way. I haven't even listened back to it. I don't really remember everything that I said on that first one, but apparently it wasn't good enough. But anyway, it's coming out soon. The uh, the new and improved proper interview. Uh, with me on on Mormon stories, so hopefully everybody checks that out too. So thank you so much, Bryce. It's been it's been awesome having you on. And uh, once again, everybody check out Naked Mormonism podcast. And Bryce, don't don't let me down. Keep it going. I'm uh, I, if you're doing it for nobody else, do it for me because I'm truly hooked. Oh, well, thank you. I I can do that at least for you and for the uh, like the three people that have been sending me emails. So yeah, I, I can do it for you guys because I love you all. I love the listeners. So and yes, apparently I'm your Facebook administrator, Mister yeah. Big Dog. I don't know I, well, she, I, and she's pretty. I mean, she's doing fantastic job so far. I mean, she's two days on the job, and I've already gotten so much information from her. Uh, she, she's awesome. So for anyway, all yeah. for all my most, I am currently. Interviewing for a Facebook administrator. If you would like to submit your application, please do so at comments at mybookofmortonpodcast.com. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the qualifications for the job are be the first one to email. So there you go. <laughs> that ought to return at least some sort of uh, reaction from your listeners. I hope so. I, I hope so. Uh, all right, Bryce. Thanks once again. And to all the Mimos, we'll be back soon. And we will still we still didn't finish Alma because we did. We, there is another chapter. So I don't know how long it goes, but it's still going. The never-ending story of Alma. 
All right. Until next time, thanks, everybody, and goodbye. This song is licensed for use within this podcast. All song and copyright information can be found at www.mybookofmormonpodcast.com. Seriously, I think this went well, and uh, outside of the technical problem, that's going to be real fun to edit. Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that too. Uh, do you want my? I can uh, compress my my side. I recorded as well. Um, you want me to send that over to you if it'll help out at all? I'm willing. Yeah, actually, that might be really because the Skype audio is never as good as your own audio. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know how you would transfer a file that big if you want to put it on whatever Dropbox or however you transfer files, but. Yeah, I'll throw it on Dropbox for you. No problem. Perfect. Sure. Do that. Are, are you going to do any like noise cancellation on your end first, or are you just going to send it raw? No, I'm sending it raw. All right, fine. Great? Make me do all the work. All right. Oh, of course. It's your show, man. I got I got my own show to edit right now. <laughs> <Okay>. And a <laughs> lot of it to edit as it is. Okay, okay. And I do have a vested interest in that show coming out. So, okay. All right, cool. Uh, Glad we...